Use transition element is a great way to make your site look more interesting and improve the user experience. For a simple example, we can take an element controlled by VF, wrap it in a transition with the name of fade, and now when the element inside our transition is added or removed, we will add six CSS classes throughout the duration of our transition. When an element is entering, we can set the initial styles with fade or the name of our transition, enter from, the final styles for the transition with, with fade enter to, and then control the easing behavior with fade enter active. And then the same thing applies for the leave transitions. If you've never used a transition element before, I've made a full video on it a while back, or I also recommend checking out the docs, but in this video, we're going to talk about three quick tips that I use to get the most out of transition. First is a pretty obvious one, but it's good to remember that this name attribute can be bound to reactive data. This means that we can have multiple transitions for this same part of our app. One place I like to use this is in things like tabs, where if we click a tab to the right of our current tab, the whole thing will slide that way. And if it's to the left of our current tab, it'll be opposite. I think that small details like this can really help your app come alive. The second is that we can trigger transitions if the root element changes key. A majority of the time we see transition being used with vif, vshow, or dynamic components, but the docs actually call out a fourth place that transitions work that I don't see talked about enough. And that's when the key changes. The key is used by the VDOM to uniquely identify nodes. So if the key changes, V will see this as a different node and do the transition between the old one and the new one. This is extremely useful when transitioning between state. For example, let's say we have a count ref, a button that increases count, and then a transition where the root element has a key of count. So when we click our button, this div will nicely transition between the two different states. And one cool thing about this is that after we increment our count, since this div is using the key, it will still be kind of locked to that previous value. Then after its leave transition, there will be a new div with a new key that will reflect the current value of count. This count example is pretty oversimplified simplify just to get the point across, but this idea of transitioning off the key can be used to make some really cool UI. For example, if you take a look at the super base docs and specifically the sidebar, we can see that as we drill down, we get nice transitions between the different states of the sidebar. From a pseudocode side, we can implement something like this by having different sidebars for different paths, computing the active sidebar from the current path, and then setting a key inside of our transition. Specifically in the super base docs, this is combined with dynamic transitions, so when we're going down a layer, it will slide one way, and if we're going back up, it will slide another. And the final tip I have is that we can use tailwind classes inside of our transition. Most of the code samples you'll see use name transitions, where we add those six CSS classes to style our enter and leave. But if we're using tailwind, this might not be the best solution because we'll end up with extra classes and using apply, which we typically try to avoid. But luckily the transition element exposes six different props that we can use to overwrite the class names that get applied. So instead of defining all the fade enter and fave leave classes in our CSS, we can take all the tailwind utilities and pass them as props to our transition element. So now view will still apply CSS classes at different stages of the transition, but instead of using the default name, it'll add on the styles that we passed here. And I can already see the incoming comments saying that this is ugly and not reusable. Well, for the first one, if you don't like Tailwind, don't use it. The second one, there are actually two ways that we can make this more reusable. We can extract this transition into its own component with a slot, or what I like to do is create an entirely separate transitions file that contains all of these transitions as object. Then we can import it into our file and use vbind to bind all of the properties in our object onto our element. This way we still have those reusable transitions and cleaner looking templates, but we're still following all of Tailwind's best practices for building apps. These are just three tips that I use in working with transitions that have helped me out a ton. I hope at least one of these is interesting to you too. And if you have any tips, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.